Well, good morning. Uh, let me read a little bit of history about this site where I, we're going to be filming today, making a little bit of a story about what was this vast piece of land back here and the building that's behind me that you will see later. Uh, let me start reading from Wikipedia. American Viscose Corporation was an American division of British firm Kurt Hulls, which manufactured rayon and other synthetic fibers. The company operated from 1910 to 1976 when it was renamed Aptex. Aptex closed in 1990. Bacon American Viscose Corporation building on 10th Street in Marcus Hook in 2020. Established it in 1909, it became the largest supplier of rayon and the first company um, to make artificial, artificial silk in the United States. The company was founded by Samuel Hager Salvage as a division of Courtauld's and began pro, uh, production in American Viscose Corporation. In 1910, later it was branded as Crown Rayon in 41 to purchase supplies for the war. The British government were pressured by the U.S. government to sell the company to 152 American investment firms in a deal led by Morgan Stanley and Company and Dillon, Reed and Company. The 2020-800-400 shares were sold to the public in 1949. The company passed into the control of Monsanto Corporation, a manufacturer of Rayon in the United States in 1952 at the new plant in Axis, Alabama. This is not the one here. We are in Warren County, Virginia. In Axis 63, purchased by PMC, uh, was purchased by PMC, I'm sorry, by FMC Corporation. In 1974, the plant in Parkinsburg, West Virginia, was closed. FMC uh, sold off the division in 1976 to its employees when it was renamed Aptex Fibers. In 1980, Aptex Fibers closed their plants in Nitro, West Virginia, the, uh, the manufacturer Rayon Staple. In 1983, Aptex Fibers was the largest U.S. manufacturer of rayon fiber as well as operating plants that made polyester and acetate, acetate yarn. Many of its closed plants have become Superfund pollution cleanup sites. This is one of them here in Warren County. There is a plant at the end that's dedicated to clean the, uh, the underwater that goes to the river uh, because of the pollution that this plant in Warren County sent to the Shenandoah River right behind here. The former plant site Front Royal, the one here, Virginia was used for manufacturing from 1940 until 1989. When the plant was closed, after being cited for more than 2,000 environmental violations over five years, including emissions of uh, I see if I can pronounce these, polychlorinate biphenyls, PCBs, into the nearby Shenandoah River. The plant was demolished in 1997. That's here, this site, where we are now We're going to be filming a little bit. And it's been restored by FMC in conjunction with the United States Environmental Protection Agency. That's the, the plant that's back there. Um, that's cleaning the water. I think they, it has a name, I forgot what they do here. <clears throat> the company made rayon fiber for fabric and also rayon cord for reinforcement of pneumatic automobile tires. Declining sales and high internal costs caused optics to close its rayon operations in 1988, briefly restarting to produce fiber for the aerospace industry and then permanently closing in 1990 for economic and environmental reasons. Later, the, the plant was demolished, uh, the one here in Warren County, and that's what you see right in front of you, this vast land. 
uh, and you can see back there there's some smoke coming from that building this is the plant that has to do with their environment cleaning the um, the water that uh, maybe or, I mean this site was all contaminated that's where the uh, the fabric, uh, the, the, the building was that made the rayon and other things. And there's some leftover machinery here from the time when it was uh, cleaned up, I mean destroyed or cleaned up. And that's the place. There's a, there are some inner roads in here, I'll try to get inside, uh, but they don't like it when you go inside. And, and, well, more videos to follow about this place, until later. This is part of the land where the factory was. There's a fence here that you can go around. I haven't been to that side, uh, but uh, there is a mount over here, as you can see. I'm sure it doesn't have any Mayan pyramids under. <laughs> But uh, probably has debris and rocks and bricks or whatever are from what, what was the factory. And with time, it got covered with dirt and grass and bushes. And that's the line of trees and the fence that leads to Kendrick Street. Well, actually, it doesn't lead to Kendrick Street, it's next to Kendrick Street. That's one of the gates. There's a lot of wildlife, wildlife living in this area. Uh, lots of deer, I've seen foxes wild turkeys and birds of many kinds. Side view of the building, the building I was mentioning, the entrance, uh, I guess it had the offices. Uh, it's still in use today, parts of it. There's some companies and non-profits here. This is a ladder that goes up to the roof. They normally are protected so people doesn't climb in it, but uh, I guess not here. I like these lights. They have a very interesting style, almost like Art Deco, and not quiet. Side entrance. This side entrance has the offices of the uh, um, Warren County um, Economic Development uh, Company, I mean Authority, I'm sorry. And uh, there's a story about this entity uh, that will come later. The uh, Economic Development um, Authority of Warren County inside of the building is using this office. This is the back of the building, and one of the offices here, one part of this building is used by CCAP. CCAP is a non profit organization. Uh, they meet, they open here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 9 to 12. They provide food and clothing for the community. 
this side is the food part, that's where the food pantry. And in this side, left side, you can make donations. It's where they have the closet, the clothing. And people that has needs comes over here where they fill up an application and uh, get some help. I'm not sure what other services do they provide. But that's a good thing. That's the front, Kendrick Street, beautiful tree here in this corner losing its leaves. And that's a large yard in front uh, with the building, the front part of the building here. We'll get closer later. And the gates. The fence is very rusty. I've seen somebody I guess from the county working now, they're scraping the fans and probably it will get painted sometime. This is the main entrance and there's a monument here of when the uh, factory was functioning. Uh, can't read it too well but honors the employees of this plant that served in the armed forces of their country in World War II. And 407 men and two women lost their lives in the service. That's the monument, stone, granite stone. And the main building. And the entrance, the main gates here. Sorry for the uh, little lapses. I think it was the light. That's the main entrance and the yard in front. It's well kept, uh, the grass gets cut, uh, it's really well kept, maintained. That's the side door on the right, and he still has the engraved name of what this was, American Discourse Corporation, with these famous lights, with brown globes. I'm not sure if they use this entrance or they uh, use the back entrance for the economic development group that I mentioned before.
entering the uh, parking lot of the Warren County Government Center. This is post office on this side. And on this side, the government building for Warren County. Hey, that's where you pay the taxes, right? That's where you come and pay taxes and other things that have to do with governing the county. Straight to five parking lot. And we are here to uh, see if we can film the um, display that they have on, on what was the about what was the viscos factory, uh, the years that operated, and it was you know I think it was the nineties um, stopped working operating. It did a great damage on the. Uh, Shenandoah River pollution and contamination. So I'm going to go inside, see the display, see if uh, nobody has any objections on me using the camera inside the building. Be back in a moment.
Here we are at the uh, site that was the Aptex fibers plant. There is some abandoned equipment here, some belong to the military, that came to uh, help clean up the site. This is a bulldozer. There's some strange arch back there left over from something and piles of rubble of some kind here some rubble left over uh, there's more rubble in some places around here back there another bulldozer or excavator abandoned here There's a lot of wildlife running around here too. That's another mountain back there. Who knows what's under? Uh, let's see. A big one here. Another excavator. All of them, they're rusty and unusual. More equipment back there. And I think they're two little, I think they call it bobcats. I'm just moving two of them here, the smaller, bigger type. All of them rusting and rotting away in this vast territory. Bravo. I'll make another short video in a moment. This is another video of the area where the factory was and the big machines left here there is some uh, streets and roads here it's abandoned uh, they go nowhere this has to do with something else something that happened a few years ago uh, building there is abandoned also More leftover streets and even lights, stop signs. The story of why this is here, uh, I'll read uh, a paper in a while, it has to do with a bad history, or, I mean, bad event that took place in Warren County a few years ago. There was a proposal to build to use part of this land, that building is was the front of the Aptex factory, still left here, there's some videos coming for this, but this white one, which I mentioned is empty and abandoned, plus these leftover pieces of street, uh, have to do with a project that uh, the Board of Supervisors and the Economic Development trust or group here in uh, Warren County had a project to build something uh, and someone or some people committed uh, embezzlement, embezzlement they took money for themselves and all of a sudden a few years ago the project was abandoned leaving more items and more things here and use as I mentioned, I'll read the story of what happened uh, here in a few minutes. It seems to be a dumping place. That's the mound that we saw from far away. 
rubble. And back there, for some reason, there is an abandoned train tankard car. It's sitting on the side of just short tracks. The railroad tracks are right here behind this fence. Uh, so, I don't know what's going on with this uh, abandoned uh, train car. Just sitting there, maybe it's a museum. And the arch is here. There. And that's part of the site. The factory that was here. If you point to the ground, sometimes you see a lot of broken rocks, broken pieces of cement of different kinds. And once in a while, I don't see any here. There's some that are red. And the red ones are pieces of the brick, of the factory that I think it was red brick. Um, and the entrance building is back there. That's where we were. What's left of this factory. And the abandoned office building, that was talking about the investment case, is right there. It's a vast place here. There's deer roaming, I've seen foxes, birds, wild turkey. And that's the east. This is one of the roads that goes to the soil purifying plant that's back there. And we're going to go back to the car soon. That's the buildings. And we're going to follow the road through our car that's parked right here. This one here. We'll follow up with information about what happened here a few years ago has to do with this building.
that's another road without, with, I mean, going in nowhere. And that's the site. This was going to be a training center of some kind. Offices, I don't remember where else they wanted to build here. But it ended up, ended up badly with the investment case. The name is Jennifer McDonald. Jennifer McDonald is going to do lots of years of jail time. She was, I um, mean, all the, tri the trial for her case took place a few weeks ago, and she was convicted of all the charges. Sentencing is not being dictated yet, but she's going to do a lot of time. For some reason that I don't know, the sheriff of that time committed suicide, he shot himself, and several members of the board of directors and other people were arrested for what happened here some time ago. So hopefully sometime somebody will decide to do to use this building for something. There's even there's a kitchen inside, there's furniture, office and see um, office furniture, tables and chairs. But it's all abandoned. It's not being put to use. There's another excavator left here. And we're going back to the exit and leave. That's the right word I was looking for. It's a leachate. Leachate plant. Parsons is a company that's doing the cleanup. And that's the road we saw before going all around. Back there, the plan is back there. Uh, leachate, to my understanding, means they are clearing the soil. The water that comes from the soil, it gets cleaned up in the plan with some chemicals or I don't know how the process works before it gets down to the Shenandoah River. So out we go and I'll read more about the other article later. The Army Corps of Engineers was involved in demolition and cleanup of this site years ago. Why they left equipment around, that's beyond my pay rate. So this is one of these caveras that's rusting and wasting away here for many, many years already. And uh, to conclude the story of what happened here uh, in this part of the land that was the Aptex Viscose Fiber uh, Factory Corporation many years later, uh, the article I got from the internet written by Antonio Olivo, I'm not sure when uh, this took place a few years ago, it says, Debaco, from Royal Debaco, Virginia Town Rock by Economic Development Scandal. Storefronts in Front Royal, Virginia, which is at the center of a state and federal investigation in Warren County officials, Front Royal, before the 21 million allegedly went missing, before the sheriff put his gun in his mouth and fired, before Tuesday's announcement that the entire top tier of the Warren County government had been indicted, there was the dream. It was a dream of renewal for this town, 70 miles from Washington, D.C., which fell on hard times after a rayon manufacturing plant closed in 1989, leaving 1,300 people jobless and 440 acres full of toxic waste. 
25 years later, with the land cleaning up, cleaning up in Front Royal increasingly attractive to tourists and former city dwellers, officials announced plans for a data center and retail complex that would bring 600, 600 jobs and act as a catalysis for other projects. The deal was brokered by Jennifer McDonald, a Front Royal native who directed the Warren County Economic Development Authority. Washington area developer Truck Kurt Tran pledged to finance it with 40 million from wealthy, wealthy immigrant investors and 140 million federal contract his technology company had secured. As an added bonus, Tran would fund a police training academy overseen by longtime Sheriff Daniel McHerthron. This is the sheriff that uh, put the gun to his mouth. But those were lies. Documents in Warren County Circuit Court allege. Tran never had the money to build the data center project on the 30 acres his company bought from McDonald's agency for one dollar a civil lawsuit alleges. One dollar thirty acres, no bad. <laughs> Uh, and the training academy was one of several hoaxes that prosecutors and civil lawsuit claim allowed Tran, McDonald, and McHerthon and others to siphon away millions in public, public funds, which they allegedly used to buy properties, pay bills, and gambling debts, and enrich relatives and friends. Not bad. Sammy North left husband, left husband of former Warren County Economic Development Authority Director Jennifer McDonald and Donald F. Poe, a family friend, were among those charged with McDonald, uh, along with McDonald. Uh, now McCurton is dead, Tran is being sued by the Economic Development Authority and there are state and federal investigations underway. McDonald faces 28 state counts of embezzlement, money laundering, and obtaining money through false pretenses. She has denied the allegations that did not return interview requests, while Tran declined to comment. Tran was uh, the developer, the guy that was supposedly to be uh, putting up the money, I mean, investing the money, declined to comment through his attorney. Okay, that's the story of that time. Uh, I think that happened around, uh, I don't remember exactly the dates, 14 or 15, uh, maybe, a little, maybe a little bit later. I just know for sure that uh, two, three weeks ago I saw in the news and it was reported here in the local papers that Jennifer McDonald has been found guilty of all the indicted charges Sentencing to sentencing to come, uh, and probably she will spend most of the rest of her life in jail. Well, so much for developing this area in Prince William County. I'm sorry, in uh, Warren County. Uh, Prince William County has other problems. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like these uh, videos about this site. What was the site of the optic fibers? Crayon and uh, pollution and lost jobs and many other things that happened here many years ago. And uh, unfortunately, what was supposed to be a promised land of uh, jobs and investment and uh, stores and training places and blah, 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 ended up being just nothing. And uh, the city were in the city dwellers were left with uh, just that, what you saw. Empty land, broken machinery, a pollution cleaning plant back there. And yes, good for the wildlife, lots of deer jumping around here and uh, birds and other things moving around. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.